and um, so welcome, World Retail Forum. This is a, a sort of a broadcast experience I've been waiting for for the past year. Uh, I first met Leah's company without even knowing I had met them in Soho, I think last March. And uh, what she's doing is, is it's really the future of, of shopping. So if that seems abstract, it won't be for too long. We uh, at the World Retail Forum believe that by learning together, we're going to recover stronger and uh, firmly believe that. And, and so the people that attend this, for those of you who are, who are I challenged, um, we have about a thousand executives in 50 countries who join us um, over the course of the, of the last few months. And we get really good, uh, we have attendees and CEOs and executives, directors, brands, Procter & Gamble, L'Oreal, financial community, and architects. So you can see it's a fully, it's, 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 a, it's a great group of people. It's, it's fairly from travel to technology to some of the most premier retailers. And we've gotten, you know, thank goodness, some very good press from um, some very good media outlets. So thank you very much for your support. Um, I don't normally do this. But for those of you who don't know me, it's probably important to know, well, who is this guy with the glasses talking to me at nine o'clock East Coast time? So my name is Dan Hodges, and I have been um, very effective at identifying inflection points. And the one that we're going to be discussing with Leah is, is massive, it's sudden, and uh, as compared to other inflection points. So I started my career managing the billion dollar Procter & Gamble business, and I uh, was on the ad side for about 10 years. The first inflection point that I uh, was involved with was the launch of the internet uh, at Discovery, and that was in 1995. And none of us knew what, what that was um, in terms of, but we just sort of went with it and sort of monetized it. And also Jeff Bezos in, in 94 also saw that as an opportunity. Um, after it, internet, um, I was involved with the first interactive advertising with Jay Chiat, who ran uh, Chiat Day. And we made the first interactive uh, Nissan ad, which is uh, commonplace. After that, uh, I work with our chairman to work on a, actually the first streaming channel called Your Choice TV. Um, and that was in 1997. So a lot of, a lot of things I, I've, I've seen. In, in 2006, uh, I led the largest mobile sales team in the world at Endpocket, and then later we were acquired by Nokia. And in 2007, I went to the uh, Walmart executive team and said, you know what, mobile shopping is going to be big and it's going to change your business. Um, in 2012, we actually were the first group working with both presidential candidates using mobile advertising in the 2012 elections. Um, and so what we've been involved with in this the last, I say, seven or eight years is the industrialization of smart media and the trend that I see happening, and it's accelerated through COVID-19, is sort of the, 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 the use of personalization, curation, mindful and sustainable, sustainable experiences. One of the blessings and curses of being a um, person who sees inflection points is generally people don't understand what I'm talking about at the present moment. So in terms of the best thing that we can do in business is to understand pattern recognitions or to understand our ability to, to, to see them. So Leah is going to give you a PhD in live stream shopping in 30 minutes. So thank you very much for waking up so early and thank you for joining us. Uh, next week, we're going to a live tour of probably the most advanced supermarket in China. It's the T11 market in, in Beijing, which is rapidly expanding. After that, we're going to live streaming, uh, like more broadcast with our expert, Philip Nelson, who works for Richard Branson, Elon Musk, and people like that. So he's quite, quite known in that circle. After that, we're going to uh, almost a, f a, couple, a couple hours looking at uh, the future with our speaker, Jeff Frum from Futurecast. We're gonna look at sustainability. We're gonna look at the economic impact of, um, of, of of uh, COVID-19 on industries. We're also going to look at a macroeconomic impact of COVID-19 on various business and segments. So put your, bring your pencils and paper for that one. And we also have a very special guest, the venerable Tenzing Pyridashi, 
who is the director of the Center for Ethics at MIT and the Dalai Lama uh, Center. He is uh, very close with the Dalai Lama and he's going to talk about the, the importance of ethics in business, which is a, a sign of a global trend. So hold on to your hats. So I wanna to talk to you about streaming video. And when you look at streaming video, the bottom chart, what you'll see is the 2019 numbers. But if, let's just take a quick look at the explosive growth of streaming media and time spent by age. This particular almost doubling of usage by key demographics, and these demographics being 35 to 54 and 55 plus, which tend to be the, la the latter part of the adaption curve, are already using it. So voila, the, the market for streaming everything, including shopping, is here, and it's happened in the last 12 months, and that is unprecedented. That tip, this chart typically takes about 10 years to get there, and it's there now. When we look at the, the use of streaming, um, what we'll see is that about 25% of all TV viewing right now is streaming, and it's, a, a, it's in Amazon, Disney, but you know, channels like Shop Shops will be taking a greater part of that because the brilliance of what Leah has been doing over the past five years is that she's made compelling content that translates globally. In every week, we survey members of the World Retail Forum. And what we're finding is that 60% of, of, of the people basically want personalized service, personal shopping, appointments, live video shopping. So there is a demand. In fact, 33% are actually using um, live streaming to engage consumers. And many, many retailers throughout the world are, are improving their technology stack. So, I first became um, aware of this when I was in China last year with, uh, with Lee, and he is a famous uh, influential, sort of in the beauty segment. And when you watch him, he'll be, he'll be putting on, I don't know how many lipsticks in 60 seconds. It's just, it's mind boggling. You can't get your, you, you can't get your eyes off it. And very much so, um, when we look at the numbers um, in terms of revenue, and these are probably understated, but we're seeing a doubling of live stream revenue uh, just over the last year. And so, so let's, let me introduce you to Virginia Sharp. Um, Virginia is the uh, proprietor of, of a very fashionable um, store in Macon, Georgia. She was concerned she was gonna go out of business. What did she do? She got herself on live stream. So that's small boutique survived coronavirus because she started live streaming fashion shows on Facebook. And <clears throat> every Friday, um, she basically has a fashion show. And so, so the great thing about what Leah's doing is, is that um, she has been working with her team around the world, perfecting the art of live stream shopping. And here's an overview before we hear directly from Leah. Sophia. Hey. What's up? Live streaming shopping is clearly very popular in China. What's happening here? Well, live streaming shopping is kind of getting started. Every social media platform is tapping to social commerce. And also now Amazon Live, there are still a lot of brands who are tapping into Chinese consumers. For example, I have a friend named Ashley. She has a store in Soho called Anthem and she uses Shop Shops. So Shop Shops is a platform that brings Western brands to a Chinese consumer. I'm Ashley Turchin. You're inside Anthem's, a multi-line store in Soho. Most of our live stream customers are like in mainland China. It's like mid twenties, more from urban cities, Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, Hong Kong. The shopping capitals of China. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you just explain how you got into live streaming shopping? We were a store that was trending on WeChat. And at the time, I didn't even know what WeChat was, but I downloaded WeChat immediately and I was like searching Anthem. Within a couple of days, I hired a Mandarin speaking sales associate who kind of helped me develop a WeChat and a Weibo. Because of that, Shop Shops, which is a Chinese live stream company, reached out to us about our first live stream. This is what the app looks like. Shop Shops. Shop Shops. We are here with Leah. She is the founder of Shop Shops. Hey, Leah. Hi. Nice to see you. We're calling ourselves this 
live stream service platform that's connecting people from offline shopping experience to online. We started as a shopping version of Yelp, basically trying to discover stores that you didn't know that existed. And live stream was just a vehicle that we found that are very real to reality to deliver that experience to the customers who couldn't really travel. We start very early in the morning because of the time differences. We on live for about three hours, about six to eight thousand dollars per event. Right now we're running about 180 events a month. 有人来了吗？可是说不说不来。放今天呢，是来到了我在纽约特别特别特别特别喜欢的一家店。So they love walking into the store and showing that there's a presence and that it's a big space and there's a great energy. What happens is we all try on outfits. You guys are about to be on camera. They loved seeing me in the product because I think you know I'm the owner and like at the time I had bleach blonde hair and for some reason her audience <laughs> loved that. They would buy the whole outfit. Like I would just come on camera and all these like hearts and flowers and kisses. And wasn't it so satisfying? It was like, so be weird because in America, like that never happens right. to me. How did you gain so much momentum with the Chinese consumer when Shop Shops first launched? We were just a store on Taobao Live. So we started with me and my partner slowly, slowly gained a lot of followers. Turn that into the new model as what we're building right now as a standalone app. Yes, China has been the first in terms of adopting to live stream as part of their lifestyle. So I think that's where we can see and learn how that user behavior changes. Just amazing. Um, so Leah, over to you because you are the real deal and.、Um, We are so happy that you're you're here. Hi everyone. Good morning. I am Leah Wu,、um, the founder and CEO of Shop Shops.、Um, thank you for having me, Daniel. And it's a pleasure to be here today.、Um, I guess I'll just quickly start、uh, with the intro, a little bit about Shop Shops. That we started in 2016 as a store on Taobao,、uh, where a team of five started、uh, with the idea of building what we、uh, believe to be experiential shopping,、uh, delivering specifically for cross-border shoppers in China,、um, and that's where we start. And right now we are in about five different countries. Uh, U.S.,、uh, Canada, Japan, Dubai, and Italy, selling all directly to Chinese consumers. And uh, as uh, part of a COVID、uh, change, we are launching our English edition. So if you go to、um, um, the Apple Store, both Android and、um, iOS, you will be able to see our first edition or a beta version of our English app. We're coming out with a A further developed one、um, in September fifteenth.、Uh, so here is what we do.、Um, how do I play the video here? Or、well, I, here we go. We're go one, four, three, two, one, and this is so fascinating. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we've been、uh, going to different offline retail stores in many cities across the U.S. And we have hosts going to the stores, present product, featuring details, and we do have a host back end that allows these hosts to work independently, and they curate, select, upload the product.、Uh, once they're on live, they're able to tag these、um, individual、uh, presentations almost into a short, a video form, can be watched over and over by our、um, uh, audiences. And so, for a lot of these events、um, that we have customers in China, viewers、uh, in China tuning in to watch. So, as you can see in the video, this is how the setting looks like. You have your best friend going to shop with you in your in the store, could be your assistant, and the product has been featured during live, pointed out by the viewers. Selected most of the time by the viewers as well. It's a very interactive shopping experience where what you see is what you put, what you can buy almost immediately, and a lot of the feedback response happens in real time. So it is like a QVC upgrade where you participants or viewers are totally immersed in this experience itself.、Um, If you can't make it to the store, this is the best alternative to be placed in a real, authentic, 
background of the location and be able to learn about the product, learn about the story, learn about the history. Um, everything about a store, a brand, a person, um, and then obviously in the end about the product that you are interested to buy. We have a lot of feedback from our viewers who've never been to the U.S. or are able to find um, and discover experiences through live stream that they've never discovered before. And we even have viewers or our customers actually traveled um, to LA stores, to L uh, New York stores on their destination shopping tour is where they are able to have an in-person experience. So this is what we found interesting in 2016 to start with. Uh, but today we are live about 300 events or oh, actually more, way more than that. We're about 600 events a month. So average 20 events covering 20 hours of that time zone. Um, so here we are as a team of Shop Shops. Um, next slide. Absolutely amazing. Um, what we're believing to build is not, a lot of people compared us to QVC. I think, um, yes, it, it is uh, present uh, visual wise, it is like a shopping on television reality show. Uh, but we look at it as uh, retail tamers of the new generation, which is retail entertainment and commerce combined into one. So it covers social, travel, live, retail, and e-commerce. And we are building a three-sided marketplace for retailers, brands, to be able to directly curate, interact with their viewers through what we call an host influencer. And that is how we see in the long run or in the future, this is the triangle that Shop Shops is building by delivering experience, interaction, and curation. Um, you know, slide. There were, now, I wonder, Lee, if we go back to 2016, and uh, you know, always, I always say that the first order is the most important order. And so when you were talking to those companies back in 2016, those 20 companies, what was the, you know, how did you, uh, what was the process of getting them on board, getting them organized, and, and what have you learned over the past, you know, uh, I guess the past four, four years, five years? Um, it was, in the beginning, we were considered to be crazy. <laughs> um, I basically, in the, um, as a startup, let, I walked through almost all the New York possible stores, different areas and the LA ones. Even today, I can draw you a map. I think a lot of the stores are where I went into the stores, talking to the store managers, salespeople, um, myself, to get them understand what we're trying to feature and what we're asking them to do. Um, initially, a lot of the question was on what is live stream how much participants that they have to do in order to join. Um, I think so that was the very early stage. I think our first event was with the multi-brand store in New York called OTT, o -T -T -E. they were part of a um, early adopter um, to live stream um, on our platform. And then obviously there's um, Anthem who I accidentally walked into uh, while was, I was discovering different stores um, in Soho. So I think the early adopting brands or stores are those very fashion forward um, and then those that are eager to try. So that's how we begin. And quickly we have um, sort of a word of mouth of that experience and most of the brands or most of the stores that worked with us were amazed uh, by the ability um, to delivering um, not only transaction, but the overall experience to a cross-border market that they couldn't reach themselves. Um, yeah, so that's how we started. And um, today we are live um, in Japan, is another market that we tapped into since um, the last quarter, uh, since the last quarter of last year. 
And so that's where also we're bringing on a global shopping experience as we believe it. Congratulations, Leah. And I guess that if I am your sleep doctor, I am, uh, I am talking to you about getting more sleep because I think that you're probably, you know, working <laughs> around the clock. What I, what I also, I want to encourage you that there were, there were a couple of college dropouts that really weren't going to get any good feedback. And those college dropouts include Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so the fact that you're getting, um, and I, I, you probably know this, but if you haven't heard in a while, Google was rejected about 340 times regarding the business plan because no one knew what they were talking about. So they couldn't really approve their business plan. Colonel Sanders, I know KFC is very, very popular in, uh, in China. He was rejected over a thousand times uh, and started his business at age 70. So the fact that you are, uh, are, are no one understands what you mean, uh, is a sign of, of that you're on the right track because no one ever understands what you're doing until now. Now you're a genius because of course, back in 2016, when you couldn't get the meetings and, and do that. Uh, so it's so interesting. You know, I, my personal experience was I was in a, a place called Dreams in Soho. And I, so you're two, you're two people there. And I said, well, what is this? And what's well, Shop Shops? And they had 10,000 people in China that were looking at the, uh, at the stream. So absolutely brilliant. And, um, and, and now our, so it must be a little easier to, uh, when people, when you're talking to companies, um, to get them on board. Yes, I guess with experience and uh, a, a lot of hours pit, put into this business, we're able to persuade more um, brands, more uh, major retailers to be able to collaborate or work with shop shops. Um, and for now, we are at uh, Century 21. We're working with Simon's uh, Mall. Uh, so there's a lot of... Um, it's much easier comparing to when we first started, but there's also a lot of more expectation uh, coming from what we are able to present and um, deliver, obviously. So with the English product, we are actually providing um, a training process uh, for a lot of the retail partner that we work with. Uh, from what we've learned that a lot of retail brands, uh, big or small, even mom and papa stores, their concern is about how to deliver the experience. Their concern is how to present in front of um, a camera or in front of their phone. Um, so those are some concerns that we're currently um, learning again, trying to address and to um, learn with our partners um, so that we can really enable them not only just use as a product, but use us as a service where they can learn and build their live commerce with shop shops together on the English global market. Excellent. Um, thank you. Let's turn to the next page. I think we have more of um, a size of the growth that we see for the, the world, obviously. Um, so this is a reference to the China live streaming marketplace. And a lot of it, uh, we were referring to Taobao, um, as most of us know that it's a, a part of Alibaba uh, group. Um, Taobao live commerce is probably leading um, the overall, I would say the global biggest live commerce platform currently. And that is the growth that they're expected to see um, in the next uh, few years. Obviously, even with pandemic going on, I think that number is going to explode more than they expected. And for that, we see uh, almost a direct relatedness, relatedness of the current US um, market, uh, almost similar to what's happening in 2017 in China. So new, uh, live commerce as a new shopping behavior is slowly being formed in the U.S. and English speaking market. And that's where we believe it's a global adoption of live commerce. And with the pandemic, the user shopping behavior is completely changed into this more mobile social 
uh, virtual based shopping behavior. Absolutely. And so I guess a lot of people are interested to discuss COVID. A lot of the brands and retailers are heavily affected by this change, especially when they're completely um, offline based. Um, so I did a little bit sort of uh, a comparison of what we've seen um, on the China side and also what we believe that um, the, the global um, the global pandemic will bring live stream itself and um, into the eyeballs everyone uh, of every audience. And then again, obviously turning live commerce as a main vehicle for shopping. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Nope. So this is almost a, a video of a recording that uh, we're showing here with the Laura Mercier event. Um, I think it needs to be in play, Daniel. Yeah. Um, so this is what a typical uh, live shopping event looks like when we work with uh, a major uh, brand or partner. Um, so hosts, as you guys can see here, are um, in front of phone and products are being selected ahead of time, curated, but the content that's happening is very authentic, uh, very real, um, and because of that interaction, people are asking questions, asking specifically to test out the mascara, the lipstick, um, the facial care. And it became more of a two-way show instead of a one-way TV show. So this is where uh, we are able to provide almost uh, a process where a lot of the brands can adopt live stream quickly using um, our host or their um, own sales associates or their own influencer turned into hosts. And this is how we see the future of shopping will look like. Hey, when you look at your, um, your, your group of, of customers on that chart that goes from 2016 to 2020, is there one category? Uh, do you favor clothing, fashion, uh, beauty, or, and I guess that's the first question. The second would be, are you trending? So could it be that you were fashion in 2016 and now you're half fashion, half beauty? Has the mix changed as you, or has it remained fairly consistent? We have been fairly consistent. Um, I think that we have never wanted to be building shop shops as one category. Um, from the very beginning, we are shopping in Soho, shopping, literally virtual shopping uh, in Soho with an, a tripod and iPhone walking around different stores in the Soho district. So for me, Shop Shops is almost like a virtual shopping mall with different floors of a different nation <laughs> or different country. And in each country you go in, you'll be able to see the experience of a different location-based um, stores. And so we don't really categorize that experience by the, the different sort of categories. So we're not completely fashion, we're not completely vintage, uh, we're not completely beauty. Um, there's a blend, and normally that blend is um, somewhat determined by our own viewers too. Um, they would tune in, make suggestions, and also we learn from the data that what's been seen the most or what's been highly interesting to audiences based on um, brands, based on location, based on category, and then also based on host. Um, so basically right now we sell product from $5 all the way to, I guess the biggest item we've sold on the platform is about 24K. Yeah. Um, all the, uh, and then category, I guess we are besides milk powder or cars or planes that we haven't really sold, uh, we sell mostly uh, fashion related um, items. Great. We're going to launch a poll with questions, which we'll share with you uh, at the end. Um, yeah, one of the questions we got was, um, how, you know, how do you get started? So if somebody 
has a great either, uh, let's say, a makeup idea or a fashion idea, do they contact you? Do you have an evaluation process? Do you, how does one get started? You know, because this must be a, a question or a process that you, uh, that you basically have, um, you know, over the last four or five years. Well, um, it's very easy. Right now, you can go download our um, app. It's called Shop Shop Host. It's for the host end. And you can download the app and then enter in your, so entering, I mean, obviously register and then select uh, if you want to be, if you're individual seller or individual host, uh, or you want to be, uh, or you are the um, corporate or what we call merchant sellers. And once you register, we'll have um, our, um, uh, our sales or our BD person to contact our partners directly. And from that on, we will start sort of providing a service of how to set up with shop shops. Uh, what does live mean? How do I create my first preview? How do I go live? How do I interact with our viewers? So we do have almost like a, what we call eight step uh, program that's specifically designed to work with um, our retail partners. And in the beginning, we will be able to virtually coaching or, or um, providing in-person host um, to uh, provide that service, allow our partners to go on live um, themselves, or they can select our host um, to go live in their stores. Okay. So in the case of the dreams where you're going in and you've got different handbags and different, um, how do, uh, so when I, so how do you integrate the, the item into your, I guess, shopping basket? So if there's a handbag or a scarf or makeup, how do I, how do I, um, how do you integrate the back end with the front end in terms of you know getting that particular uh, lipstick or that particular blouse or particular um, let's say handbag? Yeah. Um, well, right now we are integrated with uh, Shopify. So if you're already existing Shopify store, then the product in your Shopify store can be all, uh, uploaded quickly um, into the, the Shop Shops back end. Um, besides that, we enable um, upload um, products with Shop Shop host end. So basically, you can, it's fairly easy to take a screenshot, uh, create a name, uh, write in the size, color, uh, uh, about, I would say, 30 seconds of a process to upload that product and you're able to sell. Um, so basically, you're actually able to sell during live too. So during a live event, when your customers or viewers is talking to you, hey, what is the bag behind you? I want to see that bag. Um, you could you literally take a picture of that bag and upload the product to live stream in the shoppable mode in about 30 seconds. Okay. So one last question, because I know you're, you're with 20 hours of programming, you've, you've got a busy day. So <laughs> if you look at September... Yeah. 2019, and we compare that to to what's well, August because we were, we're into September. So August 2019, as compared to August 2020, sort of what yeah, on on the busyness scale, um, where are you on a scale of one to ten in terms of busyness and demand? Um, I I mean. We have always been pretty busy. <laughs> we're, a, we're a team, uh, grew from five to a hundred right now across uh, both mostly China and uh, US. Um, we don't really sleep because we do run on two time zones or more than two time zones most of the time. And um, we are, as we grow, we feel like we're still very busy. There's not a moment that we feel like we're stopping. Uh, but in terms of the number of events, I think this year, even with the pandemic, we, uh, we tr uh, doubled comparing to last year this time. Um, so I think last year we are featuring about 150 uh, live event shows to 200 event. Right now we're doing minimum, oh, sorry, uh, 300 event shows last year because I kept thinking just the US side of it. Uh, we're about 300 live event last year. Right now we're about 600 and above uh, this year for August. 
So coming up, we are looking at probably by year end, we're looking at close to um, 1,000 to uh, 1,200 events is what we're targeting by end of the year. So sort of a, it sounds like wait, it's, it's a doubling and a tripling of the, of, of the business and you're on a st steep demand curve. Well, this was, you know, I know it's so early in Vancouver and uh, you haven't had your coffee yet. And, um, and, but we just so appreciate it because again, I've been uh, looking forward to, uh, to seeing you and learning more about uh, the company. I thought the company was phenomenal a year ago. Um, and now the, the, the pandemic is really, you're really, uh, you're so well-timed to, to meet a market demand. And uh, I think the sky's the limit. So thank you. If they want to get in touch with you, so you you've got your QR code and, and your, uh, your email here. So um, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you everyone for, for listening. Hope I am, um, hope I was um, doing a good presentation. It was enlightening. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.